Hallelujah. Glory to God. The blood will never lose its power. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. God bless you uh, out there in YouTube and those that are watching through the Facebook link. We bless God for you and for your uh, kindness to join New Image Christian Fellowship this morning for the most sacred service that we could have, and that's Holy Communion. We bless the Lord this morning for a brand new day, a day, as the saints used to say, we've never seen before, and when it is over, we'll never see again. Oh, we'll see another day that has the same name, but it won't be the same day that we've seen before. So we bless the Lord for being in this day at this time in Jesus' name. We bless the Lord for those who, those pastors and leaders who uh, have continued to support us. Uh, Prophetess Co Pastor Paulette Zimmerman of the House of Prayer, the In Gathering with her husband, Bishop Samuel Zimmerman. They are the leader, founders and leaders of this ministry, and they pray for just that, the leaders. And we bless God for them covering us as we go forth in the things that Father God has given us to do. We bless God for Apostle Doris Smith and Greater Works Miracle Ministry out of Miami, Florida. Uh, Prophet is co-pastor Zimmerman in the House of Prayer and Bishop Zimmerman are out of South Carolina and New York. Apostle Doris Smith is in Miami, Florida. We bless God for you joining us. We thank God for Pastor Shate Holiday of Truth and Love Ministries, Goldsboro, North Carolina. We bless and First Man Clyde Holiday. We bless the Lord for Bishop Timothy Dorch and uh, Elect Lady Terry Dorch of Word of Truth uh, Christian Fellowship in Goldsboro, North Carolina. We thank God for Ambassador. Uh, McKay, Barbara Jean McKay of Jehovah Rapha Ministries in Kinston, North Carolina. We bless the Lord for these who continue to stop in and support us. We thank God for Pastor Lamone Hodges and elect uh, First Lady uh, Renee Hodges of Raleigh, North Carolina. We thank God. We thank God for Apostle Maurice Goodall and Dimensions in Christ Fellowship of LaGrange, North Carolina. We bless the Lord for all of you who continue to support us through prayer and uh, uh, your presence when you can. We thank God. We thank God for others uh, in clergy, in ministry. We thank God for uh, Elder Janice Myers. We bless the Lord. Amen. Uh, Pastor, also Pastor Michelle Gooding of Herring Grove, they call it the Grove of Kinston, North Carolina, stops in whenever she can. And we bless God. We thank God for all of you, for Prophetess Kendra Walston out of Tarboro, North Carolina. We bless God. She had an amazing uh, event yesterday and God moved in a mighty way and we thank God for that. We thank God also mainly for our clergy at New Image Christian Fellowship, Bishop Russell Rouse Jr., El Evangelist um, Marisa Heeb, and Elder Rico Greenfield, who had a birthday yesterday. And uh, we were trying to get to him, but we could not. We call, I called three times, but I couldn't get him to wish him happy birthday, but we bless the Lord for him seeing. I think he put out that he was 46 years old and was blessed to see that with some of the complications he's had with his health. So we thank God. We thank God for Ella Tawana Branch uh, out of Fedville, North Carolina. We thank God for all of you, many more that I could name, Pastor uh, Peggy Fields, uh, and, it, and, and it is so ministry of Snow Hill, North Carolina. We just bless God for all. I'm trying to remember everybody. But if, if I miss you, please charge it to my head and not my heart, because we don't take for granted that you take the time to stop in 
Evangelist Angela Best Hill, the late Bishop W.J. Best's daughter. We thank God for you. Amen. And purpose, that is the name of her ministry. The name of, now I like to call it our, the name of the ministry the Lord gave her to oversee is purpose. We bless God and we thank God. We also thank God for Prophetess Olivia Sahib, who is with us this morning. And we bless God. We thank God for you. Now we're going to pray and we're going to turn, amen, this uh, powerful man of God a loose, Bishop uh, Russell Rouse Jr., that he may take us behind the veil and then cause us to sit at the high Yes, God calls us to sit at the table, hallelujah, and dine. Ah, uh, God, remembering our big brother Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. Oh, bless his high name. We thank you this morning. We love you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We lift you up. Hallelujah. For you said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto, the, uh, unto myself. Hallelujah. This morning, we are lifting you up. We're being obedient to your word where big brother Jesus told us that in as often as we do this, we do show forth his death until he comes. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for the benefits of being obedient to take this sacred service and to be a part of it and sit at the table and remember him. And we thank you this morning when the word is through and we've taken these sacraments. Ah, oh, God, that you have sanctified for this reason. Oh, God, and that, Father God, you turn it from the natural to the spiritual, as the saints of old used to pray, that as it go down in our body, whatever is wrong from mind all the way to foot, hallelujah, whatever is wrong, you are going to fix it, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this great man of God in your strength, in your power that's coming forth. We thank you, Lord, that you are imparting fresh strength, fresh virtue, and fresh anointing uh, into him as he pours out. And then give us ears to hear, for you said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Give us ears to hear and hearts to receive that that you're about to bring to us through him. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Bishop Rouse. It is now in your hand. I'm sorry, let me, Pastor Bobby Perkins, yes, God, because him and uh, uh, First Lady Perkins are very faithful in supporting me. So I want to make sure I call them for, uh, also. Um, New Birth Outreach Ministries, that was the first ministry and really the only ministry that mother sent out, the late overseer Addie Prince, was the only one that she actually sent out that was birthed out of her, of the, of the ministry the Lord gave her to oversee, the Bread of Life Gospel Tabernacle. Pastor Bobby and Lady Tara Perkins, a New Birth Outreach Reach Ministries, was officially sent out to start ministry. And we bless God for that. Uh, a lot of the others have, have asked to be under uh, her uh, leadership when she was living, but they were the actual ones sent out. And we bless God for that. God bless you, uh, Bishop Rouse. It's in your hand. Good morning, everyone. Uh, and greetings to uh, you on this morning for taking time to be with us on this morning. We do thank the Lord uh, for our Chief Apostle Tamar McCarver and Evangelist Marisa Heave and Elder Rico uh, uh, Greenfield and, and, and Elder Tawana Branch and just everyone who Apostle has already uh, mentioned on this morning. We thank the Lord for you joining us and taking time out of your busy schedule to stop by and see about us. We do not take it lightly. 
uh, at all for, as the old saints used to say, uh, you did not have to do it, or he did not have to do it, but he did. So we thank the Lord that he touched your heart on this morning for you to stop by just for a little while. And we're not going to prolong uh, our Holy Communion service for this is the most sacred time. Uh, this is the most sacred service uh, known to man. Uh, it is not my opinion, but uh, this was very symbolic. And there are a lot of things that we, uh, a lot of ceremonies and a lot of services we partake in that have a significant meaning, but this is the ultimate meaning and the opening, ultimate reasoning of why we are still able uh, to receive uh, God's grace and God's mercy. For we're going to ask you to make sure uh, that you have your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're all going to look at verses 23 to 31. Uh, once again, that is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 31. And what we like to do is we <clears throat> do not like to, we do not want to just go in <clears throat> and partake in, excuse me, and partake into the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ without uh, those of us understanding uh, the significant reasoning behind the Lord's Supper. Uh, this is holy, I mean, excuse me, this is holy communion. Uh, and we thank the Lord for it. So once again, that is 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verses 23 to 31. Uh, and I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. So uh, you, if you are reading from the New and International Version, whatever translation you have, that's totally fine. Uh, just one or two words might be slightly different, but that's that should be about it. Uh, and it says, uh, verse 23 says, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse 25 says, after the same manner, he also took the cup and when he had supped it, saying that this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he return. And verse 27 says, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of our Lord. Verse 28, <clears throat> but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh, excuse me, unworthily, <clears throat> eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And for those that are just tuning in, that is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 31. And before we go in to our communion, we do want to honor the prayer that was uh, prayed over by uh, Chief Apostle McCarroll. Uh, and we thank the Lord for the song selection she chose on this morning. And once again, we do thank you for uh, being with us on this morning. And so, so we begin <clears throat> that the Holy Communion, my brothers and sisters, on this morning, we need to understand that it is not just an act of worship that we engage in every Sunday. Uh, some churches may do it every Sunday. Some churches may do it once a, once a month. Some churches may do it twice a month. Some may do it once every quarterly. However, it does not matter, but it is not just something that we just do. But the Holy Communion is also, my brothers and sisters, known as the Lord's Supper. And we have to understand here that it is not a simple act where Christians or us that are believers, we just get together, break a piece of bread, drink the grape or whatever uh, uh, liquid uh, selection that we some denominations choose to represent the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we go home. However, Holy Communion is such, 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 and I say such three times, it is such important, very important, and therefore we should seek an understanding, uh, especially those of you that are in the new faith, as why we do it, because 
if you're just participating in it, it becomes meaningless. It, it becomes displeasing to God and it becomes a, a detriment to all of us because we have to understand that there are three things in Holy Communion. And the first thing is the message of Holy Communion. The second thing is the purpose of Holy Communion. And then the third thing is the order. I'm going to say that again. The first thing is the message of Holy Communion. The second thing is the purpose of Holy Communion. And the third thing is the order of Holy Communion. So now we have to understand that a lot of us, uh, we, we need to realize that communion uh, is the act of time of, of, of sharing, the intimate fellowship. It, it is very uh, special. Yes, we can worship in our own separate amount of olives. Uh, yes, we can worship separately in our cars and in our jobs and in our homes and wherever else that we go at. But when we get uh, amongst the brethren and the sisters of Christ, and the reason why we are brothers and sisters of Christ, because when you allow God to be the captain of your ship and, and when you come back into the household of faith and understand that he died just for you and, and in the Baptist church, they always say, didn't he die? And see, that's, that's the question. That's a rhetorical question for you to understand that he died just for you. Therefore, when you understand that the Lord, when you take the Lord uh, and Savior, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, to rededicate your life and to pick up your cross and to uh, follow him, you understand that those that have made that same choice are now, if they are male, that is your brother, and if they are female, they are your sister. So now we have to understand that uh, it's a unique time of worship. Holy Communion is very unique, my brothers and sisters. It's a unique time of worship because we as believers, once again, we commemorate that the Lord's death through prayer and meditation uh, it is, we, we also uh, take that prayer and that meditation and we understand and we try to, well, let me say, we try to understand. We have an idea because no matter how much we study the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there is no present knowledge that we can understand just how badly he was beaten, get this now, just for you. So now we have to understand that the purpose, okay, of the communion is to receive from Christ the nourishment and the strength and hope and joy. That's what we have to understand. It's, it's a nourishment thing that we want to receive during Holy Communion. And so when we look at the, the, the message, when we look at the message of Holy Communion, the first thing is you have to understand that there's a new covenant that was established when Jesus the Christ shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. There was a new covenant. Therefore, if you look at 1 Corinthians 11 and 25, it said, in the same way also he took the cup after, after supper. And say, after supper said, this cup is a new test, new covenant in my blood. Do this, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We have to understand Christ himself became the sacrifice and the old covenant, which relied on animal sacrifices to provide atonement for sin was no longer necessary. And you can find that in Hebrews 8 and 13, it says, and speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete and which becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. So therefore Christ himself became the ultimate sacrifice. We, we often Sometimes think of the ultimate gratification we will experience on life. We, sometimes we feel like we understand the ultimate feeling, or there are some things that give us an ultimate understanding, an ultimate feeling of just the uh, days and meanings in life where something special happens in our lives or if there was a significant moment in our life where we had to uh, experience a new understanding of something. We, we consider that the ultimate peak of our understanding now for that which we thought we understood prior to that present moment now is vanished away because we have a new ultimate meaning. We have a new ultimate understanding. Therefore, we have to understand that when Christ became, when he became the sacrifice, Sacrifice, the old covenant, which relied on animal sacrifices to provide atonement for the sin, was no longer necessary. And it's because one thing about Jesus that I love, Jesus the Christ, is very simple. It's something that has a significant meaning, and that is when He does it, He does it once and for all. I, I've, I've never, uh, you know, and it just, it just hit me that when we study the Bible, when we look at the Word of God, if you go through, there are things in the Bible that God did that He 
very rarely had to do again. I mean, some the people that was healed, the same woman with the issue of blood and Bartimaeus and, and those persons that was in the Bible, you got to understand that when he performed these acts and these miracles, very rarely did he had to go back and redo the same miracle. Get this now again. And that's special. That shows you right there that not only was he chosen and not only was he of God, but it's, it's a special meaning when you have someone that can do something in your life once and for all. Yes, we have significant others in our lives. And yes, we have our spouses and our children who we just love, you know, so good. And when they do something, it just warms our heart. But get this now, when the warmth of our heart goes away, then they have to redo it again. Yes, we remember it. And yes, we call it. But when we begin to allow our mind to think back uh, of what they did, we want to feel that again. And, then, and if somebody doesn't show it, they doesn't do it after a while we think there's something wrong but what i like about jesus and and, and something i mean it just came to me right then what i like about jesus is when he does something he does it once and for all and the good thing about it is that when he does it and i and instead of saying when he do it when he does it which means it's already done because does is past tense when he does it you have to understand that it lasts forever because the reason why the old covenant was no need no longer necessary was because the blood of the bullocks and, 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 and the goats, uh, you had to keep doing it. Everybody that need that that took in sin. Everybody that committed sin, not took in, excuse me, everybody that committed sin, they believed at that time, which was how they was taught, that if I bring a bull, if I bring a goat, you know, I have to shed the blood, I have to sacrifice this. And why? People say, why is that important? I mean, it's just a goat. It's just a bull. You had to understand what those animals at that time provided such nourishment, plenty uh, of, of reliability and resources for families. So it wasn't just uh, a goat and a Bullock. Let's put it in the mindset, since now we deal with money, let's put it in the mindset that every time they committed sin, they had a brain of just about everything they had. Now, I mean, I get this. They didn't just choose any type of goat. They didn't choose the goat that was disformed. Or they didn't choose the bullet that had three legs or some type of, uh, uh, you know, a uh, problem with, with them. No, they had to bring their best sacrifice. So how often, let's think of this here, how often, because I'm getting back to the point of, of, of the message how often or, or what if they ran out of the best they had i mean let's just think about that if they they don't they don't commit so many acts of sin that they don't sacrifice the best that they had when do you go back and now if i sacrifice the best that i have now i have to go back and find something else that matches what i gave the first time but what if i don't have anything to match what i have the first time then therefore i am not able to receive anything but however we have to think of it this way i and my brothers and sisters we you, I, and our families, we don't have to go back and continue to keep finding the best we have for the Bible says, come as you are. So God, that lets us know there that God is pleased with just who we are. And when we come to him and when we come willingly and, that, and we're not forced and, and we're not prepped up and we're not bribed and we're not pumped up and we're, we're not, you know, intimidated and forced and, and just and, and just have to make sure we have to make this decision. Now, it is life or death, but I want to help you to understand that this here, when Christ did it, he made sure that you understand that you don't need to worry about bringing no money. You don't need to worry about foreclosing your home. You don't need to worry about clearing out your bank accounts. You don't need to worry about getting your best attire. You don't need to worry about cooking the best meal. The only thing that he wants you to bring is you. You are the best thing that you can give God to show him that his sacrifice was for not. Now, so let's look at this here. The, uh, the next thing in the message that we have to realize is that God seals his agreement of salvation with those who believe that Jesus Jesus died to set them free. Listen, he 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 seals it. He he he. he we, you have to understand that the message in Holy Communion is that he sealed his agreement of salvation with those who believe that he died to set them free. And this is what you got to understand. When you don't believe that God died to set you free, then therefore you are making sure that you are unsealing the agreement that he already made. And, and I'm going to say that again. When, when you don't believe that God died to set you free, what he sealed by his sacrifice, you are trying to undo it by not understanding and believing that he set you free. How so? Let's put it in the mindset of this. And this is not the same. It is not 
the same, but this is the idea. Whenever we have a deep cup, a deep cut on our body somewhere, I mean a very deep cut. I'm not just talking about one you can stick a little band-aid on. I'm talking about one you got to put ointment on, one you got to clean. You got to put alcohol in it. You got to clean it. You got to put peroxide in it. You got to clean it again. And then you got to carefully put that ointment on it. Then you have to probably put a gauge or something on it or a non-stick pad. And then you have to wrap it up. And then the next morning or throughout the day, you have to undo that, go back through the same process over and over again. And after a while, after you do that, you begin to see that that, that wound begins to form a scab. Now, and, and what is a scab? At least a scab is very important because it shows you that the body is healing. Get this now from the inside. Very rarely do your body heal from the outside. I, I haven't seen a moment. I mean, I've been on this earth for 35 years and I very, very, I, I rarely, I mean, I, I don't remember ever seeing the body heal from the outside in. I've always seen the body heal from the inside out. So therefore, when a scab comes, when a scab comes, it shows us that, 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 that our mind and our both on the natural and the spiritual side, that we are healing on the inside. Now, you know, we always want some uh, reassurance that we are healing, that, that we are getting better. And when we see a scab, uh, you have to understand that that scab shows us that you are healing from the inside out. And what does it do on the outside? It makes you want to make sure that you are carefully and you're still following the same process to continue to heal. Why is that important? Because a scab Make sure that the wound does not uh, uh, re uh, receive, uh, uh, go back to being infected or re-injure itself. But get this now, if you pull the scab off too early, then the wound opens back up and the blood comes back out. See, uh, we, we're going to get there in a moment now. If you pull it off too early, the scab, and listen, matter of fact, you know it's not properly healed yet because if you begin to pull off the scab too early, it begins to hurt a little bit. You, It's like you're forcing the scab to come off and therefore when you do, you open back up the wound and blood comes off. But what, what, what I like about the scab is when you when you are healing and you are continuing to wash it and you are continuing to do uh, and follow the proper guidelines uh, you know, of the doctor or more so grandmama and, and auntie and them that have you know those great uh, uh, regimens that you can use to, to heal. Not saying the doctor is not necessary, but sometimes we have things that we can try this before we go to the doctor. However, when you properly use that, you begin to see that the scab, it went you listen when you get to where you're ultimately healing the scab will begin to come off by itself you and, and look this this is amazing because i think about a scab the, a scab the whole entire scab does not fall off all at one time you began to see parts of it come off and then other parts of it come off and therefore you begin to see uh the little pale or, or you know the little pale skin and then what was noticeable the mark that you could find that was noticeable on that day that looked like it's clear white and the different from your skin tone it begins to blend in to your skin tone again. Why is that important? Because you need to understand that when God sealed the agreement, he placed the scab. That means he let you know that you are able to heal from the inside and out because he sealed the agreement of salvation for those who believe. Why do why is that why is that important? Because the, the key part of, of my note is you have to believe. So therefore, if you do not believe, then you're opening up back this, you're opening up the wound back over. But but for notice what I said, he sealed it the salve, the agreement of salvation for those who believe. Don't get me wrong, everybody don't believe. And I, I you know, I don't know what you believe in because I, I tell I told somebody the other day, they said, Why do you love the Lord so much? I said, I love the Lord so much because if I work for the devil, he killed me and I don't have a chance to get it right. But the Lord, I, if I make a mistake, he gives me another chance to get it right. So why not? a serve of God who gives me a chance to get it right. I never said I would be perfect because when will you know you are perfect? But the message is that God sealed it, the agreement, okay? That's that's the, that's the message. That's the first part. Now we go into the purpose. And, and the purpose is the second thing because we have to remember that his sufferings and death as it is mandated, it was mandated by Christ himself. This was not something that, that somebody placed on him and he had no knowledge it was coming. He knew it was coming. How so? Let's look back at 1 Corinthians 23 and 25. And if we do that, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Get that now of me. 
Okay, verse 25, after the same manner, he also took the cup, and when he had supped it, saying, this cup, the New Testament in my blood, do ye as often as ye drink it, and remember some of me. So now, we have to understand, to remember his sufferings, the purpose of Holy Communion is for us to remember his sufferings and his death, as it was mandated by Christ his, uh, his, himself. The second per part of the purpose is, we have to proclaim that our faith is the efficiency of his death. Our faith and what we believe, notice I said earlier, that God sealed the agreement of salvation for those who believe, right? So therefore, it, it, the purpose of Holy Communion is for us to proclaim our faith in the official of his death. How so? Let's look at, if you look at 1 Corinthians 26, it says, for as often as, for as, often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he come. And in his return, okay, you have to understand for as often, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. See, that's, that's the thing. There's not Holy Communion is not one person that takes Holy Communion and it and it, it, it represents us uh, 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 as the body of Christ or us as the church, I mean, as, 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 that, as that church body, okay? But everyone has a choice uh -huh, to partake in Holy Communion, which means you have a choice to proclaim or to not proclaim. See, I need to help some of y'all because when you deny Holy Communion and someone asks you, uh, do you want to partake in it? And you get up and 30 of y'all get up at the end of service and you walk out. That shows or it could show or it could represent that you are not ready to proclaim what God did for you. You, you say, I love Jesus, but how do you love Jesus and you never could, uh, participate? You never indulge in Holy Communion. How can you say you love him and you never do what he said do this in remembrance of me this action here i need you to remember me in all that you do but in this way also so now with the other purpose is we have to remember that to fellowship in the body of christ uh -huh, is the sense of reinforcing fellowship among each other in the church and if you look at for if you go down i know we said holy communion is 23 through 31 and it is but if we go down two more verses to verse 33 it says so then my brethren when you come to together to eat wait for one another see that's that's something the purpose of holy communion is you gotta wait for one another. that's why you I, I gotta help you because now you understand why they take time to make sure everybody's on the same bench and that there's space for the usher to walk through and then there's another bench and they tell you all we have to move we have to organize we have to get this thing uh together because we want to make sure that everybody has that feeling of doing this amongst their brethren and their sisters that is a purpose there because notice god he said i I, you know, in my note earlier, I said, God, he sealed the, the, the agreement of salvation for those who believe. So when we began to take in it and when we began to align ourselves and organize ourselves to properly uh, partake in the most sacred ceremony known to man, we are, we should be, and I know I am, we should be enlightened to fellowship in the body of Christ in the sense of reinforcing our fellowship amongst each other. Therefore, it leads me to my third thing, and then we're out of here, the order of Holy Communion. You have to pay attention to the order of Holy Communion. Therefore, because you, you must not take part in the manner unworthy of Christ's suffering. That's that's the order. Okay, you 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 can't take it in the manner of unworthiness. That's that's the order. But but also you have to understand that, that it implies sin that is not repentant for an irrelevant attitude. Therefore, when 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 you when you don't partake, that means you 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 you're, you're not uh, repenting or you're not admitting because verse twenty eight said, "Let a man examine himself." So that means you don't want to examine yourself and. You you don't want to look too deep in yourself, but at the same time, you, you got to pay attention here that it implies that sin is not repented for, and, 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 and therefore you have some type of attitude. If you look at verse 27, it says, whoever, whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks a cup of the Lord in, in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of our, of our Lord and Savior. Unworthy manner. What is the unworthy manner? The unworthy manner is for you to think that you are not worthy enough to accept what God has already done for you. And that's, that's something that I had to grow up in and I can testify about myself because who better to testify about Russell Ross Jr. than Russell Ross Jr.? The thing about it is, is I had to get there. And then, you know, when I knew that I had sinned, and, it, and sometimes you, you get to maturity in the Lord when you know you have sinned. You don't make an excuse for it. You don't sit up here and say, I didn't dot every I and cross every T. You don't try to say, well, this happened and I didn't shut the door right and, and I didn't cut off the light like I was supposed to.
opposed to. Uh, but you, you you just sit down and say, you know, I stick. OK, I, I, I made a mistake. Nobody forced me to do it. Nobody tried to, you know, no, uh, intimidate me. Nobody tried to hold nothing over my head. I know what I was doing wrong and I know I did it. And now I, I'm, I'm out. And, and the thing is, you know, when you're maturing God and have a new relationship with God, when you understand what you did and it hurts you that you did it, you, it hurts you that you did it because you know that it hurt God that you did it. And so therefore we have to understand my, my, my brothers and sisters here that, that, that you are worthy enough and you, you were, you are worthy enough because you were worthy enough when he did it, when God sacrificed his life for you, he didn't do it just for those, uh, you know, who, who of a different race. He didn't do it for those who of a different color or from this side of town or from this state. He did it for those who believe in him. And notice what he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. He already knew you was going to mess up. That does not give you the excuse to keep doing the same action. But when he had enough strength in his body before he took his last breath to look up towards heaven and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That is letting him know. That is letting you know, my brothers and sisters, excuse me, that God has already uh, has a, a, a notification that you're going to send. The second thing about the order is that each one of us should put ourselves to test as the attitude or the, excuse me, the attitude of our own very heart. Because our outward conduct, if we have to do that by our outer, outward conduct and understanding of the true nature and purpose of Holy Communion. That goes right back to verse 28. If you look at it, it says, let a person examine himself. And then listen here, when you examine yourself, and I want to help you out, I was a math teacher for 11 years, but when you see a comma, that means pause. Now, it doesn't say how long you should pause for, but when you pause, that means you want to pause until you have the understanding of, of what's going on. But if you look at verse, verse 28, there are exactly two commas there. And the way that those two commas are set up in verse 28 helps you understand what you need to do when you examine yourself. Let a person examine himself, comma. That means pause. That means that as long as it takes for you to look inside yourself and see where your, your mess is. And let's just call it what it is, mess, your lying, your deceit, your manipulation, all that, let, let your, your, you know, your, your, your uh, 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 what, uh, narcissism or whatever it is. I think I'm saying the word right. Listen, you got to look into yourself and why do I need to pay a therapist to tell me about me when God is already showing me about me? That's so, you know what? That's amazing to me because no matter how much I pay somebody to examine me, they still don't know everything about me, but I know everything about me or I know what I is 90% of what I know about me, but God knows all of it. Therefore, when you pause, it says then. After you take time to properly sit down without rushing and examine yourself, then, and there's a comma, which means now I can stand up, I've acknowledged where my mistakes is, I've acknowledged my wrongdoings, I've acknowledged who, my sin, that's the thing, I've acknowledged my sin, then I can eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So how for, how, how is it that we, uh, uh, or shall I say, uh, what is it? Uh, that we, we should put ourselves to the test. We are quick to test others, but we don't want to test ourselves. And I'm not talking about testing yourself and, and making sure how clean you can be at home and, you know, cleaning up your bedroom one day. But I'm talking about testing yourself to examine yourself the same way you put others underneath a microscope. Do you have enough God in you to put yourself underneath that same microscope and examine yourself for how can I help somebody else if I can't even help myself? That's the thing. We have a lot of people who are around here trying to help everybody else. And to be told, you can't even help yourself. How can I properly help somebody to experience the true joy and the true love and the true understanding, and the true adoration of God if I can't even examine myself to get me to examine, uh, to understand those same things? So now we have to understand here that because of those who, who don't participate uh, in an unworthy manner and, and they are guilty, you, you got to understand that when, when, you, when, you, when you don't participate in an unworthy manner and you are guilty of re-crucifying uh, re Christ, I'm sorry, my tongue got tired there, this is what you risk. You risk 
the illness and even physical death. How so? If you look at 1 Corinthians 29 and 30, I'm telling you, if you look at it, it says, for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the law of the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. And then verse 30 says, that is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died or some are still asleep because you do not understand. Listen, you, you don't understand. You can't do Holy Communion in an, un, an unworthy manner. OK, you cannot just do Holy Communion just to say I've done it. OK, because, you know, I, I just want to I don't want nobody to think I got no problem. I don't want nobody to think something wrong with me. So I'm just going to do it. I really don't care about doing. It. I'm just doing it. So grandmama won't piss me. Or I'm just doing it. So granddaddy won't be disappointed or I won't be embarrassing mama and daddy in front of the whole church. So I just do it. Let me help you understand when you do that. OK, when you do it unworthily and when you do it from that type of, 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 of feelings or emotion, you are bringing so many illnesses upon yourself, even death. So therefore, you have to be careful. That's why you have to examine yourself before you do that. Now, so we have to understand this. And this is the last point uh, in the order. It says if we judge ourselves before participating, however, the Lord shall not judge us eternally with the world, but discipline us. Hey, listen, ain't that, there's a difference between judging and discipline. Judging means that I'm, I'm taking you into account for what I know you're supposed to know. How many times we get, listen, I'll, if you ain't got a ticket, God bless you. If you ain't never, if you ain't never had been seeing them blue lights behind you, God bless you. Okay. God, God bless you. You just the most perfect driver. Some people say, well, I ain't never got a ticket, so I won't speed. And that ain't true. You were speeding. You just ain't got caught. However, I got caught. Let me just be honest. I ain't mad to say I got caught. And it's a different thing when you hitting that gas and then you see them blue lights come out of somewhere. It's a different thing when you hitting that gas and you see that state trooper turn around on the other side of that meeting and you just know he's coming for you. The same feeling, okay, the same feeling that you know this is coming. You, you want to understand that 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 is judgment that you you're putting yourself when you don't when you participate in Holy Communion without the heart to remember God in the most ultimate way. Because while, the, while people look at the outside shell of you, the Bible says that God looks at the heart. But get this now, the heart can't feel, but except for what the mind brings to their soft it's to the heart. I, I get tired of people saying, I'm doing what's in my heart. What do you mean? You're doing what's in your mind. I, I'm doing what I feel in my heart. Listen, you don't feel now. If, if I, listen, if what you see that transforms your feelings to your heart. So therefore, we uh, thank God that the, one of the purposes is that he took judgment away. Okay. He took judgment away for us as who believe in him and he disciplines us. How does he discipline us? Because he don't kill you the moment that you see him. He don't stone you as the elders in the village were going to do with the woman who committed adultery because, they, you know, they, she, she did the same thing they did. But the Bible, and then Jesus asked them the question, This, you know what, you got to love Jesus because he asks you a question for you to already examine yourself. He said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone at that moment. He not, I mean, I wasn't there, neither were you, but let's just take it to consideration that none of them said what their sin was, but get this, all of them dropped their stone. That's amazing. So therefore you got to understand that God took away the judgment. Okay. And he put it to where he can discipline us. And when he disciplines us, get this now, I've learned this from the apostle and the late overseer, uh, Adam M. Prince, and, and, and by my father as well, that God, if he loves you enough, because he takes time to carefully discipline you. He takes time. Now, oh, listen, some discipline does hurt, but get this now. You, you, you're never going to be perfect. You're never going to walk around not committing any sin, okay? It, it doesn't matter. You can go out. You can try to eat as perfect as you want to eat. You can try to walk and dress as perfect as you want to uh, dress and walk and talk, and that's all good. But at the same time, you need to understand that what God did was he took judgment off your head. He took the bounty off your head and allowed for you to be discipline. So therefore, that is our meaning of Holy Communion. Now we're going to transition, my brothers and sisters, 
into the actual Holy Communion ceremony and our Holy Communion service, okay? And I just wanted to give you a background of why Holy Communion is so important. And that was the message, the purpose, and then the order. So if you have your sacraments ready to go and you have your, your uh, uh, sacrament that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and then you have your sacrament that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we're going to go ahead into our Holy Communion service. And then it says again, as we begin our uh, verse Corinthians chapter 11, uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 28, it says, uh, let a man examine himself. So let us uh, let so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And verse 31 says, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged, excuse me. So at this moment, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give us about a good uh, uh, couple of uh, moments for us to uh, 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 confess to God uh, uh, and, 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 and examination time uh, before we continue on. All right, and we're going to ask uh, Apostle to Makaira if she does not mind if she will give us a prayer before we uh, go into the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We thank you. Now, as we are here to partake of taking this bread, this symbol of your body and your blood this bread and this wine, we ask you, Father, that it be sanctified, make it nourishment for our physical and spiritual body, that all ailments, all illnesses, and all diseases will be taken away as we take this in obedience and remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. And... Verse 23 says, for I have received, excuse me, mm, it says, for I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he had, in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is our body. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And at this time, before we uh, partake in the body, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I would ask you to do as the scripture has said on verse uh, 24, and when he had given thanks. So we, I'm going to allow us a, a moment to just, a quick moment to tell God, thank you. And if you want to go ahead into whatever category you want to give him thanks for, that's fine. But I just want to take time now to thank God for all that he's done. Get this now. I thank him for all that he's doing. But I want you to consider thanking him for what he did not have to do. We know what he did, but thanking him for what he did not have to do for what we ultimately deserve for the punishment that we deserve for the death that we deserve. I thank God at this time that he did not have to do it, but he did. And after we have given God thanks, I will ask you to take your sacrament that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I ask you to break it in half real fast. And you should hear some type of breaking and crisp in it. And let us now partake in the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Verse 25 says, after the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he, when he had supped it, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us take our sacrament that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And let us drink it in its entirety so that we do not miss not one drop of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us take that at this time.
Amen. And then finally, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shoot the Lord's death till he come. And we thank you on this morning for, for taking in our Holy Communion ceremony with us on this morning. I'm going to yield it back into the hands of the Honorable Apostle Tamar T. McCallum, and we bid you Godspeed for the next six days until we meet again on the seventh day. God bless you. Back into your hands, Apostle. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. The message, the purpose, and the order of the blood. Oh, my God. God bless you, man of God. I tell you, every time you bring forth that word on the blood, it's just a whole brand new sermon. And we thank God for that. We thank God for you all who partook, partake, partook I had it right, uh, with us this morning at the table. And for somebody who wasn't able to do that, we want to say to you that you can, you can. We, we want you, the father wants you at the table. It bothers him when you are not there because he set a place at the table just for you. So right now, even though we have taken it, you're going somewhere, I guess, or You'll be with us the next first Sunday and you can sit at the table with your sacraments and know you're supposed to be there. But right now, we're going to give you an opportunity to come into the kingdom simply by saying what Romans 10 and 9 says. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus. Do you confess him? All right. Very good. That God have raised him from the dead. Do you believe that God has raised him from the dead? You do? Okay. Then the scripture says, this I didn't write this. I wasn't around when this was written. Probably hadn't even been thought about it. Nobody had but God. The scripture says, thou shalt be saved. So if you have confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that he's now living and sitting on the right hand of God, interceding for you, you're in the kingdom. And you know what we say? Welcome home. Welcome home. Hallelujah. Welcome home. Now, it's just like a brand new baby that's been born. You can't just birth a baby and leave it there and say, well, welcome to, to the world. And you walk off and leave the baby there. They have no way of getting anything. They'll die. So what I'm going to encourage you to do New Image Christian Fellowship is always ready with word and with prayer and with mentorship and nurturing in the spirit of Christ to help you along your journey. But if you decide that you know of another ministry, maybe that's close to you that you can go in person and fellowship with and get your word, by all means. You go and you keep feeding your spirit man because it just got, it just came to the forefront by you accepting Christ as your personal savior because that's what you did, okay? So go and, and go to the Bible study and hear the word and read it and pray. You say, well, I don't really know how to pray. I've never prayed. I have met someone who had never prayed in their entire life. And I prayed with them. And when it was over, they had this look on their face and I'm going, okay, what's the matter? They said, do you know, I hate to say it, but that's the very first time I have ever prayed. 
what you say? The very first time I have ever prayed. Now, let me tell you something. That was special to me. That daddy came to me to help somebody to say their first prayer that they've ever prayed in their life. And now that person is just praying and praying and praying. And they said, that felt good. I said, yeah. I said, he's your daddy. He wants you to talk to him. That's your heavenly father. That's your creator. He wants you to talk to him. They said, hmm. Well, I'm going to do that. And I haven't been a couple of weeks back, saw them, and I could tell that their prayer life is still ongoing. When I tell you they were lit up, you could see the light of the Lord in them. I said, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, it matters and it works. So we are glad you are in the kingdom on your way home. And we bless God that you are able now to partake of this Holy Communion. God bless you, Bishop Rouse, for that word. God bless all of you that have tuned in with us today. For some reason, uh, Facebook has blocked me from doing more live videos. And uh, Daddy said, go to YouTube and you can share it to, to Facebook. And whoever wants to be uh, involved, they can click on it. You still can comment and everything. Everything is right there. So we bless God. I have no idea why they did, but I'm like my daddy. You just keep right on moving on. Keep it moving. And so I bless God for that. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Have a beautiful Sunday with daddy and just enjoy your heavenly father to the utmost because that fuels you to go into this cut the rest of this week because this is the first day of the week. A lot of people look at it as the, the seventh day, but it's not. You don't tag daddy on the end. He put himself first. So Sunday is your first day of the week. Saturday is your seventh day. So your first day of the week, he wanted it that way. So if you started with him, he makes the rest of the week all right. So therefore, your rest of the week is going to be amazing now because you have started. And what way to start it is this sacrifice. Honoring the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So God bless you and God keep you.